when a profound silence covered all things, and night was in the middle of its course, your all-powerful word, O Lord, bounded from heaven's royal throne. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the second Sunday after Christmas. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. You are Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, splendor of faithful souls, Graciously be pleased to fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all peoples by the radiance of your light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things came to be. Not one thing had its being, but through him. All that came to be had life in him, and that life was the light of men a light that shines in the dark, a light that darkness could not overpower. A man came, sent by God, his name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. The Word was the true light that enlightens all men, and he was coming into the world. He was in the world that had its being through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own domain, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To all who believe in the name of him, who was born not out of human stock, or urge of the flesh, or will of man, but of God himself. The Word was made flesh. He lived among us, and we saw his glory, the glory that is his as the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. John appears as his witness. He proclaims, 
This is the one of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me because he existed before me. Indeed, from his fullness we have all received, yes, grace in return for grace, since though the law was given through Moses, grace and truth have come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is the only Son who is nearest to the Father's heart who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. The Word was made flesh and lived among us, and we saw his glory. By becoming man, Jesus signified that our bodies are sacred, since our bodies express who we are as persons. I don't know if you're familiar with the philosophy of dualism. Well, it's an old heresy which is resurfacing today. It sees your body in opposition to your person or to your spirit. We are not souls imprisoned within a body. We are embodied spirits. <laughs> Many people in today's world simply take it for granted that there is in some sense a hostility between the person and the body they possess. Now this can be traced back to the French philosopher Descartes in the 17th century who saw the body as mere matter. He was a mind over matter man. If we view our bodies as mere matter, then they can be regarded simply as objects of manipulation or exploitation. Because of this, Many Catholics, for instance, continue to reject humane vitae, that timely, all be it disputed encyclical of Pope St. John, Pope Paul VI in 1968 on the subject of contraception. They reject it on the basis that our bodies are private things we possess and can be used as we see fit, leading to the common refrain that the church should stay out of the bedroom. How many people have you heard say, I can do what I like with my body? By separating body and spirit, man ceases to, ceases to be a person and a subject. He becomes merely an object. To treat someone's body or your own as an object is doing an injustice to yourself or others as persons. Descartes, whom we mentioned earlier, had embraced the views of the English scientist Francis Bacon, who believed that the goal of all human knowledge is man's mastery over nature, including your natural body. Hence, People influenced by this thinking saw the prohibitions in man, Humanae Vitae as preventing man from fulfilling that dream. The same applies to in vitro fertilization and other experiments which see the body as mere matter. The body can never be reduced in such a way. The invisible side of man and woman is expressed through the visible. To put it simply, I am my body. The social upheavals of the 1960s have changed people's attitude towards the purpose of their bodies. One of the trailblazers of the women's liberation movement in the 60s and 70s said that no woman is free who does not own and control her own body. And the thinking behind this statement has influenced people even within the church. Pro-abortionists, for instance, use this same argument for pursuing their flawed agenda. Well, if the body is mere matter, as Descartes believed, and many people believe today, then you are free to do what you like with it. However, 
That seems to contradict what St. Paul writes in his first letter to the Corinthians. He writes, You don't own your own body. You are not your own property. You've been bought and paid for. Your body belongs to the Lord. And if we're not using it in line with his will, then its ill effects will be evident in the type of persons that we are. Pope St. John Paul II wrote in one of his encyclicals, and I quote, If there is an enemy who wants to separate us from God, that which is most sacred is what he will violently attack. The battle for man's soul is fought over the truth of his body. End of quote. Now, knowing that truth and living by it, despite hindrances, will shield us from the error, from error, and keep us on the path that leads to the resurrection of our bodies on the last day. in prayer to God. Let us pray that the new year sees an end to the pandemic and infuse us with new hope for the future. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for those people in our world who work tirelessly to uphold the value of human life from the cradle to the grave. May their labours bear much fruit. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for vocations to the priesthood for the diocese. May those who respond to his call persevere in the choice they have made. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that people may take more care of their bodily health so that they may fulfill their obligations in life. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the sick, especially those who have fallen victim to the virus. May the new year bring them healing from its ill effects, whether physical or mental. Lord, hear us. We pray for our deceased relatives and friends, especially those who died recently, and those whose anniversaries occur around this time. May they inherit life, life eternal. Lord, in your mercy. We now pray for needs of our own. Lord, in your mercy. We now pray to Mary, who listened to the word of God and kept it. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. The healing prayer. God our Father, heal our souls and bodies and protect us from the ill effects of coronavirus and help those who are trying to bring about a cure through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
by the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify, O Lord, the offerings we make on the nativity of your only begotten Son, for by it you show us the way of truth and promise the life of the heavenly kingdom through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor when our frailty is assumed by your word. Not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. To all who would accept him, he gave the power to become children of God.
Let us pray. Lord our God, we humbly ask you that through the working of this mystery our offences may be cleansed and our just desires fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go now and announce the Gospel of the Lord.